Carl Sagan, an astronomer and educator back in the 1980s, once claimed that the beauty of a living thing is not so much the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together. Nothing can be said that's more true about biochemistry than that phrase. Today, I want to look at the action and the inaction of proteins. Let's begin with, first of all, their action or their functions. Proteins can break themselves down into two categories. First of all, we can consider globular proteins. Proteins can act as enzymes, messengers, and carriers. And some of the examples would include lactase, its ability to break down lactose, insulin, a communicator that sends messages about the glucose levels in our blood, and hemoglobin, a carrier of oxygen. But the second type of protein are fibrous proteins. Fibrous proteins are used as building materials, structural components, such as the covering of hair, keratin, that's also found in our nails, and also collagen, which is found in ligaments and in tendons. I want to focus a little bit on the action of the enzyme. First of all, enzymes are considered to be biological catalysts. They essentially reduce the activation energy required for a reaction to take place, allowing it to take place at, say, temperatures within our body. Now, these act with what's called a substrate or the reactant, and they essentially can draw in a particular substrate to fit into what's called its active site. And the active site has a particular shape which will fit our particular substrate. And it bonds with our enzyme somewhat loosely by some of the four interactions that have been mentioned before. Dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, ionic attractions, and hydrophobic actions or London dispersion forces. When that substrate combines with our enzyme, it pushes a bit of a stress on the combining substance, causing it to bend or fold in a somewhat cumbersome way, straining it, and thereby inducing it to form our products. Those products are then released from our enzyme so that it can then react with other substrate molecules. I want to look a little bit at the action um, and how the rates of reaction are affected by this. Here I have a graph of the rate of a reaction versus the concentration of our substrate, and below a generic form of the equation. You can see that the enzyme is regenerated in this reaction, giving you a clue that it acts essentially as a catalyst. Anyway, initially our reaction begins with the rate being proportional to the concentration of the substrate. That happens because we have plenty of available enzyme sites. As the substrate concentration builds, what happens is there begins competition for that site because there's only a limited amount of enzyme sites. So as a result, the reaction tends to slow down even though we are increasing the concentration of our substrate. Eventually, once all of our sites are filled, then further addition of substrate has no effect on the rate of the reaction. So this tends to be somewhat of a classical curve demonstrating how enzymes interact with the substrate. Now, going back to tertiary structure, we can recall that there are four interactions that take place that help hold our molecule together. We can interfere with these interactions in three ways. Let's take a look at the first one. If we alter the pH of a solution, we can induce the Zwitter ion to take on a different charge. For instance, if I lower the pH of a solution, I can essentially interfere with that inter ionic interaction. That could lead to an unfolding of our particular protein and thereby causing it not to function any further. Where we have the disulfide bridge, cysteine uh, amino acids join together. And the presence of heavy metals can interfere with the formation of those disulfide bridges, replacing the bond essentially with an ionic interaction with silver or our heavy metal. This too can lead to further unpinning and unfolding of our protein and thereby cause it not to function. Finally, temperature can also interfere with these bonds. Again, increasing temperature can increase the kinetic energy of our substrate, making it more difficult to bind with our enzyme. And secondly, those interactions that are present inside of the enzyme itself, those could be unfolded by increased kinetic energy and vibration. You can see what happens as we increase the temperature of our particular enzyme. Initially, it speeds up the rate of reaction, as we would expect. Increasing temperatures increase rates of reaction. But once we get beyond a certain point, we cause these bonds to break. And the breaking of these bonds can lead to a denaturing of our protein and therefore render it useless or inactive. Well, I hope you found that useful. 
please click on the link in the comments if you want to see more about Carl Sagan. And thanks again for watching.